Hello, my name is Abby Karoma. I'm a certified orientation and mobility specialist in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I'm so excited to bring to you this very fast paced tutorial on using the Google Map Styling Wizard to create high contrast maps that can easily be transformed into tactile maps for travelers who are visually impaired or completely blind. I use this process on a weekly, if not daily basis to create maps to integrate into my O&M instruction. And I found it so incredibly beneficial for so many ways. Um, so I won't get into the details of that. This is just to show you the process and you can take it from there. Um, a few disclaimers before we start. Um, I am in no way affiliated with Google. Um, it's just a process that I've discovered. And so from one O&M to another, um, this is what works for me in the map making process. Also, of course, all of the student information I talk about in this video is completely fictitious and does not in any way correlate to an actual human being, let alone a student. So um, with those two things being said, let's dive right into the process. We're going to go very quick. So um, just sit back, soak it in, and give yourself time after this video to really play around with the features of this tool on your own and, um, and learn the depth of all there is to do with the Google Maps Styling Wizard. This is a map, an example of what we're going to create. Um, not exactly the same thing, but this is a tactile map that I produced probably in two to three minutes. It's complete completely to scale, blah, blah, completely to scale, and um, has beautiful saturated lines for my student to follow. So that's the kind of thing that we're going to produce today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you and walk you through the process that I use to make these maps. So we're going to start where every millennial would start, which is Google Maps. And we're going to pretend that I have just received a new student on my caseload and she lives at 904 Washburn Avenue in Kalamazoo, Michigan. So I search her home address to learn about her surroundings and immediately I'm given so much amazing information from this map. I see that she lives on the east side of Washburn. I see that she lives in a beautiful grid residential area. If I drag my map around, I can see that just north of her is East Main Street, which is a semi-business area with Lolita's Tacos and a few other stores, Harding's Market, a bus line. Um, so I'm getting a ton of information from this map. However, if my student has low vision, she's going to have a really hard time seeing the really low contrast streets, the very, very small font, and if she's completely blind, the spatial um, aspects of this map and the landmarks and all of the amazing information that I just received from it is going to be completely inaccessible to her. So I want to give her the same awareness of her surroundings as she develops as an independent traveler that I have. Um, so I'm going to create a map that's tailored to her individual needs. Um, and we're going to start with opening a new tab. You'll see why we're opening a new tab in a second. We leave Google Maps open and then jump to a new tab, search Google Maps Styling Wizard. Get ready to meet your new best friend. I'm serious. So it pops up, it's the first search result. And when we click on it, we get this pop up and it always tries to get you to try cloud-based maps styling. Okay, now I clicked on that and went into this very techie space that was totally outside of my comfort zone and I didn't know what to do with it. So um, I'm sure there's a use for it, but I always click on no thanks, take me to the old style wizard. And here we are in the upper right hand corner, we can search her address 904 Washburn Avenue. in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And the view that we receive is very similar to the view we got on Google Maps. The only difference, and this is why we kept Google Maps open, is that there's no pinpoint showing exactly where our searched address is. So um, we can navigate back to the Google Maps tab at the top of our web page and see we can get our bearings, right? 
So we can see that her address is about halfway between Coy Avenue and Dearborn Avenue on the east side. And then if we go back to the styling wizard, we can mentally map where our searched address is. Now this may be your student's home. This may be an area of town that you're going to start exploring with your student. It might be an organization or a workplace or their school. Um, take it wherever you need it to go for the sake of your student. We're gonna have this be our student's home. So now that we know where our focal point is, we're going to consider the use of this map. Now, if we were going from her home to Lolita's Tacos, I would want to make sure that the map included that route. Now, I just want this new student to have a general awareness of her surroundings. I want us to talk about some concepts like grid pattern and um, semi-business and residential and parallel and perpendicular. You know what, where I want to take this, right? So we're going to call this an overview map as opposed to a route map. And um, that means that we're going to cover a little bit more of the surroundings. And I'm gonna zoom out um, just to get a bigger picture here. Um, if she is a low vision traveler, I'm going to be able to get a little closer. If we're going to turn this into a tactile map, we do need to leave the space for the markings and all that. So those are some things that we just keep in mind um, and they'll become more important later on at the very end of this process. But some things that we just stop and think, what's the purpose of this map, right? Um, so now that we have determined the purpose of this map, just to give her a general overview of her surroundings, we're going to get into the fun part. So go ahead and navigate to the bottom of your screen where it says more options. And I always adjust two features on the map. I adjust the roads because they are very hard to see and very low contrast. And I adjust the labels because again, they are cluttered, a very small font. So those two things I find um, that's, that's my, those are my go-to changes. So we're going to go ahead and go down through our menu. We have all administrative landscape points of interest, roads, uh, transit, and water. So let's go to road. And in this new element type menu that pops up, we're going to adjust all of the roads, whether they're highways or arterial or whatever, we want to adjust all of them. So click on all. And then we're going to select this color checkbox. Now, I love that the default is this really cheery, sunny side up egg yellow. Um, and if we click on it, we can see what that does to our map. It's pretty fun, right? I mean, it gives me just a little burst of joy every time I do that. But my student might not get that same burst of joy. So we're going to make this an easy color for her to see. If your student has a preferred color, say red, you can change all the roads to red. Um, or if your student likes black um, for that contrast, we can change all of those streets to a very saturated black. So um, this is, I'm sure, very, very exciting for you. I get excited every time I do this because suddenly the streets are visible. Now we're going to go down to the bottom of the menu. The, the temptation is to click finish. But if you click finish, it brings you to this export style menu. And again, it's way out of my depth in terms of the techiness of what it's offering me. I don't really know what to do with this. So I always hit escape and click fewer options. And that allows me to see my map without um, actually clicking finish. So fewer options is the key. Now we've adjusted the roads and they're really beautiful and saturated and easy to see. So let's go into more options and change those hard to read labels. So all, and then um, we're going to adjust all the labels, whether they're street names or businesses or uh, the names of parks or recreation areas. So we'll go all at the very top of the feature type menu and then under the element type, we're going to change all the labels. And if we simply go down to where it says hidden, it will hide every single one of those labels in the click of a button. 
um, or a mouse, I should say. And again, if we go down to fewer options, we can get a, a bigger view of our map. And oh my gosh, how clean, how crisp, how easy to see. Um, it's just it's just what my student needs. And it's going to be so usable and the possibilities are endless with this display. So now that we have our map adjusted to our liking, we're going to take a snip or a screenshot of it. I'm a PC user, so I use the snipping tool. Um, according to my research, Shift Command 3 is for screenshot if you're using a Mac. So uh, double check that. <laughs> Let me know if that's not the case. As for me, what I do is I search my Windows startup menu and I search snipping. Okay. So this nifty little tool allows me to take a screenshot. So I am going to do that right now, keeping in mind where my student's address is right here and getting a nice smattering of the surroundings so we can use them in our map. Here we go, I'm gonna click new. Okay, so now this is the screenshot of the uh, visual display that Google Maps Styling Wizard gave me. Um, so essentially this is a picture now. I can right click on this picture copy it, and then I go into a Word document and paste it there. So here's my Word document. If I click on the image and then grab the corner, I can adjust the size without messing up the scale. And here I have in this Word document, a beautiful two scale high contrast document that I can print over and over and over again. I can have my student label it. I can label it. I can print it on picture in a flash paper and make it a tactile map, which is what I did in the example map that I showed you. Um, so just like that, in just a few minutes, um, we now have an electronic copy of this amazing high contrast map. So that's the process that I use to make maps for my students. Um, I am so excited that you joined me on this journey to uh, go through the process of making maps. And now I'm going to leave this process in your hands to do amazing things for your students and clients.